I thought at some point that I would have it all figured out, that making things would be a little easier, but I gotta be honest with you. It doesn't matter how long you've been designing. Creative block happens and it sucks every single time. If you're just joining us now, I suggest you hit pause and go back and watch the first two videos in this series. I'm trying to redesign the future's landing pages, and to be honest, it's been easy up until now. I mean, wireframing was a dream, developing the content strategy for that one page was super, super simple. But when I sat down to actually create the visual design for this page, I was up against a couple of things. I kept running into this one issue. I had to use these bright, fun, primary colors in a way that, you know, the site didn't feel like elementary school. And that's a challenge. And we all know that perfection is the enemy of done. But in this case, perfectionism really tripped me up. So my struggles came up in a couple of meetings that we had internally. And Chris suggested that I improve my skill set. I think that the analogy that he used was that I was using an eight count crayon set and he was using a 256 count crayon set. So I wanna share with you my design process here and I wanna show you how this page evolved. But most importantly, I wanna give you some tips about how to overcome creative block. The trick is to have a process that you can work through it. And then you just have to show up. So whenever you're struggling with creative block, try these steps. One, grid it out. Whenever I start to grid things out, I work on a desktop artboard. And many people say, hey, design for mobile first, and I think that's great. But for me, desktops are more challenging because there are more options. And with more options comes more decisions, and more decisions leads to almost uh, perfection paralysis when it comes to figuring out where to lay things out. I always try to work with a 12 column grid. And I really wanna keep the user interested, so I place the content on the page to keep that pacing like visually stimulating. At the end of last episode, I had the grid in the wireframe pretty close to the way I wanted it. But the challenge was I needed to start pulling the rest of the visual design together. Let's talk about breaking it down. If you're really, really stuck on a UI design project, try designing these elements first. A heading three plus body text. A heading two plus a subheader and body text. Buttons. Form fields. So you can see these are these are elements that you're gonna use over and over and over again. So why not start there? Start small. By tackling the small elements first, I was actually making these little micro decisions that were iterated throughout the entire design. And this really helped move the ball forward. But even still, tying these small elements together can be a little bit challenging. And that's when I started to do some research. One of the biggest mistakes that I used as a young designer was to look for references that directly applied to the big picture thing that I was making. So in this case, I'm designing a landing page. And so what I would search for when I was looking for references is landing page design or squeeze page design or download page design. And you might find interesting references by searching that stuff. Here's the worst case. The worst case is that you search for a landing page design and then you find the perfect design and the perfect design is always out there. And once you see it, it's hard to get it out of your head and you spend the rest of the project trying not to, to copy that design outright. Instead of doing that, I, I suggest we research small. Here's what that means. I try to find those small components on my page to search for. For this project, I search for things like CTA form block, which means call to action form block, or timeline design, or abstract shapes UI. So I was looking for those individual components on the page that I could draw inspiration from instead of finding this like complete solution that I wanted to copy directly. So by being specific, I was able to find a whole bunch of really, really good references that allowed me to, to pull inspiration from for the smaller pieces of my UI. Once the small components had been established, I started looking for patterns that were in the layout. Now we know that repetition is a key component of great design. And repetition is, is pretty easy to achieve in UI design. I mean, we literally have to establish things like site-wide style for typography and button design. These things are natural repetition that occurs in UI design. But what I was really looking for here were missed opportunities. I was looking for those opportunities that I hadn't taken yet to carry something through the rest of the UI. For example, I made this cool looking line that connects the first paragraph on the page to the edge of the grid. 
And what I noticed is that I didn't use that horizontal line anywhere else. There was no repetition. So it was kind of lonely. So what I did was I made sure to add one more line onto the timeline part of the landing page. What this did is it connected the left side and the right side of the timeline. So look for both patterns and missed opportunities for repetition. So at this point, all of the bones of the page were, were laid out. All of the components were designed, but I still wasn't using color the right way. And I, I've told you guys before, color is my weakness. And I was also missing these like fun little shapes that were in the stylescape, but I hadn't like pulled them into the main design yet. So I started iterating on where to put these shapes. And I especially focused on the header layout. I did several different versions of this. I'd add too much, and then I'd take too much away, and then I'd add some back. Finally, I asked around to see what other people in the office thought, and uh, Matthew and Greg thought it was great. Through their feedback and then enough iterations, I wound up in a place that I was pretty happy with. And this is really where I started experimenting with different styles of uh, mock-ups for the actual download. It's amazing what imagery and a use of color does for the overall feeling of the page. But I was able to like swap things out pretty rapidly because the bones of the page were already designed. All the components were laid out and really it was, it was on me to start decorating. My takeaway here is get the bones in place before you start decorating, before you start pulling in any kind of decorative elements or choosing your imagery. For me, this was the phase that I felt like I needed the most iteration, the most revisions. So all in all, this was a stretch for me. This was totally outside my comfort zone. Apparently I didn't have the crayons to do this. And uh, even through that, I'm, I'm actually really happy with where we netted out. So here's the final. Just to recap those tips, to recap the process that you can use to overcome creative block, here it is one more time. One, grid it out. Two, break it down. Three, research small. Four, look for patterns. And then five, add, subtract, and iterate. So try that process out the next time you're designing a UI or you're stuck on something, you're facing that uh, creative block, and let me know how it goes. I know I'm not alone in this. If you've hit a wall like this before, I wanna hear about it put it in the comments section below. And at the very least, guys, at the very least, show some love, show some solidarity for our brothers and sisters in design who are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Creative Block this week. Next episode, I'm gonna be developing this page in Webflow. And if you're interested in checking Webflow out, I've put a link in the description below. It's the easiest way for designers to make websites, like real coded with clean code websites. It's Phenomenal. Use that link because if you wind up signing up, and I, I think you will because I think you're gonna love it, we get a small kickback. It's basically like buying us a cup of coffee. So go check them out. As always guys, I want you to go out there and crush it. You got this. Like, subscribe, we love you. We'll see you next time. I just remodeled my office, what do you think? Stupid. And I think we're done. Nope, that's not it. Ah, creative block is a bit. I am, just go look. Go see for yourself. Do it. Go do it. Click the link. Do it now.